everyone, my name is Melly. Welcome to my channel. Uh, if you are new here, I hope you like what you see and you stay and subscribe. If you are a returning member, welcome back fam. We are going to do Italian stromboli tonight. I'm going to be making the dough that goes for the stromboli as well as putting the ingredients on it. So I hope you like it and stay tuned. Okay, so for the dough, we're going to do two ingredient dough. Um, this calls for one cup of fat-free plain yogurt and a cup of self-rising flour. Um, the self-rising flour is important um, since it is a dough that you're not using yeast in. So I'm just going to go ahead and get the flour put in here. Once you get the flour in, uh, you want to make sure to level, level it off because with baking it is different than cooking. With cooking you have room for error, with baking you really don't. So you want to make sure that it's level. And then I have bought this aerator off of Amazon. Um, it takes out any clumps and bumps that you may have. Uh, you don't have to use this, but if you have one, um, it's recommended. If not, you could even use a strainer. Uh, the strainer would catch clumps that are coming out. So we're just going to aerate this in here. like no clumps today that's always a good thing if there was any clumps you can see in the bottom it's double um, there's double screen in there so we catch those clumps as they're coming through and break them up okay and then we're gonna take our Greek yogurt I'm using a store brand non-fat Greek yogurt for this you can use the Greek yogurt of your choice um, however the recipe does call for non-fat so if you use one with fat in it you would have to adjust your points a little stir because this was sitting in the fridge. Hopefully I have enough in this container. I think I do, but we shall see. Looks like I have just enough. Yep, just enough in there. And then you just want to go down low into your bowl and scrape that in. Um, I've made the mistake of doing it from up high and you get a flower face with that. So that's not good. And we're just going to start stirring it around. I kind of push it into the side um, because you are going to have some uh, Greek yogurt that just kind of gets covered and doesn't end up getting thoroughly mixed there. So that's almost ready. So I'm going to take my rings off here because I don't want a bunch of flour and stuff in my rings. Scoop this down. I'm just going to squeeze this a little bit and get it ready and then I'll get it onto the flat surface and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that we are uh, mixed, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of flour on top of the um, parchment paper I put down. Just a little bit um, to have something to make your dough be able to move around on. Then we're going to take the dough, plop it down. It is a little damp, so I'm going to put just a little bit on the top, kind of press it down, get it started here. And we're going to want to elongate this as well as widen it so that we have a working surface for the um, stromboli. 
And I'm going to start by just rolling it out this way a little bit. Might have to flower my stuff here a little bit more. And you're going to want it to be um, not too thin, but a little on the thinner side. Um, it depends on how you like your stromboli to be, and it will take longer to cook if it is too thick. So now that we've rolled it out length or widthwise, lit <laughs> lengthwise. Wow! Now that we've rolled it out lengthwise, I'm going to roll it out widthwise, kind of um, get it to come where it's a little bit thinner. Wow, and it's really super sticky, so I'm going to have to keep. Uh, flowering this. And then flower on here just to make sure we don't stick. And then you're just going to roll it down. I'm going to move this out of the way. have to flower again just to keep it from sticking and then you're going to roll it down and you want a pretty good surface in the middle you can have it rustic on the edges if you want um, but I did try to get a you know try to get a good amount in the middle here for your actual filling in it Okay, and now that we've got our dough all rolled out, I'm going to put some pizza sauce on. Um, you can use the one of your choice. This is, for a quarter of a cup, it's 30 calories. I do not count points for it, and it is the Contendina brand, um, but use whatever you like. And you're just going to go over the whole thing. And we're just going to paint it. You can get these brushes at Michael's and use them. They're for painting, but you can use them for food as well. Get that a little bit there. You don't need a super lot of it, um, but again, Whatever your sauce preference is. If you like it saucy, make it saucy. Okay. And then we're going to take a quarter of a pound of deli ham. This is the thin sliced smoked uncured ham um, that is at my local grocery store. And on the lower half of this, I'm going to just put it down across, kind of overlapping a little. Like that. And then we are going to put on tricky pepperoni, 24 of them. a couple extra because I got a little bit of room there. Only like two extra. Okay. 
me and then we are going to move this up just a little bit because I did not pre-cut my onion. And if you don't like onion, you don't have to put it on there. Um, the recipe also calls for pepperoncinis, and I don't put pepperoncinis on stuff, so um, you can kind of make it your own, however you like it. And I'm not going to eat all of this onion, so I'm only going to cut that. Try to cut it thin so it cooks evenly. And I just kind of pull it apart and just kind of let it fall down over there. Strong onion. That looks about good right there. And then we're going to take a half of a cup. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball that um, of some uh, skim cheese, skim mozzarella. And then if you would put you'd put the pepperoncinis in there if you wanted those in there. And then we're gonna grab our Italian seasoning. Give some shakes. And again, you can use as much as you want or as little. They say half a teaspoon. I don't even think I put a half a teaspoon's worth. So then we're going to pull this back down and then I just take this and I just pull it up and flop it over the top and then try to gingerly pull this back because it is sticking a little bit to it. I noticed that when I pulled it over and then part of my dough flopped. It's all right. So if you notice that it's sticking when it, when you're pulling the parchment over, then you just kind of just take your time with it. And then I'm just going to kind to kind of uh, pull it up and wrap it together. Like I said, it's very rustic. Um, you can be as professional looking as you would like with it, but I do the rustic. I think it works well. one section there that's going to be just sticking out. That's all right. Okay, and I'm going to grab an egg and I'll be right back. Okay, so from here what I end up doing is I end up um, putting a parchment paper on my baking sheet and then I'm just going to put a little bit of cornmeal down underneath. Kind of gives it that um, authentic pizza bottom and it also prevents it from sticking. And I'm going to transfer this. Ooh. Oh, that would not have been good. <laughs> I'm just going to flop it over. So we'll pull it up here. Let's turn it. And then I'm just going to let it fall 
down because like I said, the dough is a little stickier. And if you get little holes, you can kind of um, just smooth them over with your finger. I thought I had enough flour underneath there, but evidently I did not. Okay, so this is going to have a little bit of air pockets. We're running with it. Just kind of want to judge as best you can. I'm going to have a hole in mine. That's all right. I can deal with that. Um, the cheese and stuff is not going to melt out because the cheese is on the bottom side of it. Okay. So what we need to do next is we need to crack our egg. And I need to grab a little fork here so I can mix this up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the brush, I rinsed it off from the pizza sauce, and I'm just going to brush around the top of the um, stromboli so that it will brown up nice and look really pretty, even with that little hole in the middle. And I kind of do it around the edge too, just to make it all nice and delicious. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the oven for 375 for about 20-25 minutes. I'll have to check on it, um, depending on whether you're using an electric or a gas range. Uh, it can vary that time, so just kind of keep your eyes peeled on it and I'll come back to show you the finished product. Okay, and I'm back to take this out of the oven. It did take um, 35 minutes at 390. I had it at the wrong time, so just to let you guys know. And this is what it looks like all finished. Um, a third of this is going to be a third will be seven points on blue and purple and eight on green. And I'm going to be serving it with a salad. This is just a basic salad blend with cucumber, tomato, and some pepitos in there. Uh, and then whatever dressing you're going to have. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, give it a thumbs up and a like. And I hope you subscribe if you haven't already. Have a great day. Thank you.